Hello everyone. Today I will give you a session about UI Meta. It's a 10 faster cloud native Spark history server. Let's introduce myself. My name is Lan Tao Jing. I'm head of Spark Engine team at ByteDance. I'm focused on Spark Engine kernel and efficiency platform building. Prior to ByteDance, I worked it for eBay, Meituan, and Alibaba Group where I worked on data platform and data warehouse infrastructure efforts. You can find my previous session by follow link. Okay, uh, let's go to the agenda. First, I will give you some background about the topic. And next is the design of UI Meta. Then uh, the, some details in implementation will be provided. The first part is the results. Let's go to the background. We know Apache Spark is a very popular computer engine in big data industry, but it didn't consider the cloud service at the beginning of its design. From Spark 3, Spark can work with Kubernetes. However, the Spark history server, which is used to provide the UI, the web UI to display the historical Spark information, has no corresponding changing. In order to better understand the significance of our effect, I will give you a brief introduction about the basic principle of the open source Spark Hit server. The Spark Hit server is built on Spark event system. During a Spark application is running, a large number of events contains runtime information will be generated, such as application star, uh, stage complete, uh, metrics update, etc. Those events are serialized into a uh, event log file with JSON format by a listener and uh, written to an uh, external file system such as HTTPS. Uh, in general, uh, all event, file, all event log files created by multiple applications in a cluster are stored in the same uh, root path. The Spark Hitsy server builds a web UI by reading the event log files and replaying them in memory. However, Replaying event log files contains four defects. The first defect is storage wasted. The Spark events are very detailed. It results a large mountain of events recorded in physical storage, but most of the events are useless for historical uh, UI display. And the event log is generated uh, stored in JSON plate text, uh, which takes up a lot of disk space, especially in some complex and uh, long-running application, uh, only one event log can reach 10 of gigabytes. Inside the ByteDance, I found that the persistence seven days event log files in a cluster took over three petabytes of HDFS. High latency of UI rendering is a second problem. The latency uh, refers to duration uh, from when a user initial uh, UI access request to when the page is fully rendered. Since replaying compressed JSON format uh, in event log files is CPU bound, when a large application ends, user may have to wait over 10 minutes to see the job history. The third one is poor scalability. As mentioned above, replaying event log has to load all meta information into memory, which makes the history server stateful. When the history server is rebooted, all files in the root directory need to be loaded before providing server. Worse, uh, the more application uh, it serves, uh, the more memory it required. To scale out this service, we have to split the uh, root directory and add a routing strategy on them, but it rides the cost of maintenance. The first defect is bad isolation uh, under cloud environments. The reason is similar to the third one. That's because the server is stateful. To resolve above four problems, we create a new cloud native Spark Hit server. We name it UI Meta. Our team is responsible for uh, Lakehouse Analytics Service, we call it LAS. 
Thus, is one of products in Volcano Engine, which is a Chinese public cloud platform. You can try LAS by this link. Spark is one of the engines in LAS. The UI Meta is the default Spark security server in LAS. Uh, let's go to the design part. Okay, from a high level design, uh, UI Meta uh, abandons the event log. It attempts to loading uh, snapshot files as an alternative. On one hand, uh, you, on one hand, uh, running a sparkation dumps a snapshot files in batch. On the other hand, the UI Meta server deserializes the snapshot files and builds the page on demand. This is the entire architecture of UI Meta. Uh, you can see uh, the, there are two parts. The left part is the running application driver. It will dump the uh, UI Meta files to the external storage. And the right side is the UI service. So uh, in the new UI service, it will read the batch data UI Meta files and deserialize them into his memory. Uh, for his server, the u users only care about the final status of application. They do not need to care about the specific events that cause the state change. So in implementation, uh, it needs a new Spark listener to serialize and uh, persistence the runtime KV store into a uh, snapshot files uh, in the running application instead of uh, store ma mass events uh, to an event log file. In addition, the KV store uh, supports carrier serialization and uh, the performance is significantly better than JSON. Okay, for each access, the UI meta provider to find the corresponding snapshot uh, HDFS path with the app ID uh, in the URL according to a rule and loaded it directly. Make an analogy. Uh, the Spark user server is streaming like and constantly append write, but the UI meta is similar to batch mode, uh, which it periodically snapshots the status. Okay, let's go to the implementation parts. First, we uh, implementation uh, UI meta storage uh, like the KV store. A UI meta store is a collection of all UI informations. Compared to the KV store, it also contains uh, some events, but this is in memory and uh, we filter out some thing we didn't need it and only keep the information we want to display the UI service. Now we use the UI meta store. The UI meta store will persistence a file called UI meta file. In this file, uh, there are four uh, bytes, magical number, and the body. In the body, it uh, consists by uh, four bytes length. Four bytes, it consists uh, to four parts. First is uh, four bytes uh, to store it the length of the uh, class name, then the class name string. Next is a four bytes length about the class instance, then the serialized class instance. All the information in the UI meta store will be persisted in this file. So how to uh, persistence this UI file? Uh, we use a UI meta logging uh, listener. It's very similar like the uh, event logging listener. The event log listener trigger uh, serialized the writing uh, every time it accepts uh, events. So the event logging listener is streamed. But the UI meta li listener is only triggered by some specific events such as stage end and job end. And uh, this writing is batched. So the UI meta listener is batched and uh, periodically snapshot the UI status. In the UI service, uh, we also write a new provider uh, like a uh, FS historical uh, provider. Uh, 
we call it the UI meta provider. In the original FS history provider, uh, it will read the event log files and replace them uh, to general KV store. Uh, and uh, it also need to listing all application paths to build the application list. Uh, all meta information should be loaded into memory. But in UI meta provider, it only reads the UI meta files and deserialize them to build the UI meta store in memory. And according to the uh, app ID from the access link, it directly passing the UI meta files. It's very easy to scale out because it's keep nothing uh, until a user uh, assess the you know the UI service. Besides that, we also uh, do some optimization work. First one is writing redundance. Each stage complete events will trigger a writing uh, for the UI meta files. To eliminate the writing redundance, UI meta contains a map inside its listener to record the instance that has been already serialized. Also, uh, the task data wrapper date is very large. So only the task date uh, whose state is completed at the end of the stage will be persistent. To provide a high availability of the UI service, for some special reasons, uh, it can also fall back to event log. We support fall back to uh, reading the event log files if the UI meta file uh, doesn't exist or some error throughs to passing the UI meta file. We also uh, supporting convert event log files into uh, UI meta files offline. Okay, let's show the results. After switching to UI meta in ByteDance, the result uh, shows an average reduction of 90% in storage. In one of our Spark cluster, it only took uh, uh, 350 terabytes for persistent seven days snapshot fail instead of previously uh, 3.2 petabytes of uh, event log files. The loading a snapshot is much faster than replaying uh, an event log. So the percentile uh, for uh, P90, uh, P95, P99 uh, of the end-to-end -end access is highly reduced. As a result, uh, the user can see the history UI in one or two seconds uh, after an application is completed. This graph shows the comparison of end-to-end -end access latency uh, compared to the previously uh, Spark history server. The x x0 is latency. Uh, from this graph, we can see uh, the UI meta is shifted to the left compared to the event log, and the long tail tasks are significantly reduced. So the UI meta eliminates traveling APP paths and uh, preloading. Uh, the duration between application completes and access in the new Spark Data server has been reduced from 10 minutes to several seconds. UI meta does not need to preload at the event log files directory. Uh, the loading of snapshot is totally on demand, so it's a stateful and can be scaled out. On public cloud, UI meta services are resistant according to access traffic var load balancer. Finally, it's easy to address the requirements of multiple tenants isolation by adding corresponding token uh, to the access request in public cloud under uh, current framework. Okay, that's conclusion. The new Spark History server UI Meta aims to display the Spark historical information uh, in scalable, uh, economical, cloud-native way. The result uh, above shows the UI Meta can highly save storage, increase the access speed, and improve the user experience. At present, UI Meta 
has been uh, the default uh, history server of LAS. You can try it in uh, this link. Thank you.